So let me get this straight, Mirage is supposed to be an upgrade from Tidal Wave, but I can't help but notice it only takes two pegs to sink him in Battleship now, as opposed to five. That's not how this works! <laughs> In the world of Energon, blocky robots rule. However, there is one who dares to be sleek and stylish, and that bot is Mirage. As I said, the upgrade of Tidal Wave, at least as far as fiction goes. I'm not sure about that. I think they just didn't want to have more than one boat character, f you know, swimming along just to confuse people. But, you know, not that, you know, turning a battleship into a speedboat isn't confusing. But hey, that's the way it works. So yes, we are taking a look at Energon Mirage, the Voyager class toy of the line, very popular back in the day, and for some very good reasons, and I have my own opinion, which will probably not be popular, but hey, it's too late now, here we go. So this is a speedboat of very, very cool design. This looks like something a Bond villain would be trying to escape in. It's extremely sleek and a little bit futuristic, which is very nice. It is cast with a very light blue plastic for most of the shell. Most of this is actually painted on until we get to back here, where a lot of the plastic is done in this dark cobalt color. Toward the core, we have a yellow plastic as well as black, and then some beige over here that will uh, play more into the robot mode than here in the vehicle. And you can spot uh, more colors here and there. This uh, guy's got a ton of color going on. We got purple missiles underneath these little tiny wings. We've got a little bit more of a darker, kind of a kind of a copper color. A little bit of red here on the sides. Brighter yellow over here, coming in from that. Uh, we got a different shade of yellow for the cockpit, metallic blue. This guy is color all over the place. Like a lot of Energon Decepticons, very very bright and very, very all over the place as far as color combinations go. The form itself, extremely cool. You'll see that it is not a proper boat, as there is no way this thing is actually going to float, but five wheels will actually make sure this thing rolls on whatever surface you should want. Rolling boats. It's something we do now. So, let's see, what else do we have? Well, we have this nice cockpit detail where inside there is actually seats molded in, which is exceptionally hard for me to get on camera. You can barely see it there as the light just hits it right. Trust me, it's there, and it's kind of a cool detail. And it's completely pointless on a Decepticon because he'd sooner squash the human than actually allow them to drive. So, what else do we have? The Decepticon emblem painted on, and right next to it, another Decepticon emblem buried under the spark crystal. That's redundant. So that's where you put your uh, your your uh, Energon star, should you have any kind of Terracons lying around to provide one. And if they have weapons, they can provide them here. A little peg holes that are on both sides, and you'll find them up here as well. So mounting points for some 5mm arsenals, if you so choose. Now beyond that, playability a little bit lacking in this mode. However, we do have a hyper mode, since... That's the big thing in Energon for Decepticons. They don't have like power links, they have hyper modes. And this one involves that little switch, which if we hit, a little bit of a sound effect on uh, quite a big bit of missile launchers springing up. Now they do have missiles, of course they have missiles, I have them over here, four in total, which I have opted not to uh, actually arm him with because there's switches for these things all over the place and they would definitely go flying should I do that. And yes, it's kind of annoying that it does it going forward and going back. But to demonstrate the hyper mode completely, we... you'll hear it again, I'm sorry about that. We have to disengage these little pieces of plastic over here and... We can extend them downward as extra fins, or you can actually extend them outward completely and get yourself a pair of wings. Now, you can reconnect them here and actually just kind of go with this, which kind of gives you kind of a pontoon look and puts the other missile launcher down here by the side, and that's an option for you. If you leave it completely disconnected, you can fully extend this piece out and you get wings. You can give him wings but it does kind of take away the connection point, which kind of keep, makes the back end uh, pretty rickety. So it's an optional thing. I think the instructions actually want you to have them uh, right about there. So that would be your hyper mode. 
I don't know, it's a little bit weak compared to the others, just because it doesn't lock together in any way, which is kind of unfortunate. But at least it's, it gets a little bit better once we get to the robot. Speaking of, that's one of the issues I have with the toy, is that the engineering is a little bit disappointing. So, if we take a look... Stay. You're going to hear it again. I, I apologize now. If you take a look, and we'll take a look on the underside... You notice all of this is just one big structure here for the battery pack and the sound pack and the gimmick and all that. And then you actually see the robot mode legs here. And I'll give you a hint. This is part of the torso. These are the arms. Basically, the entire robot is in the back half of the vehicle mode. And the front half really doesn't contribute anything. It's just there to stuff uh, all the bulk that is required for his gimmicks. So it's a little bit dis disappointing, I guess. But... I uh, don't know. Let's get to robot mode and we'll see if this uh, if this pans out. So I'm going to start by splitting this huge shell all the way down. Uh, this is going to be very involved to get into his correct positions, so bear with me. All right, so I'm just kind of opening everything up here so we can get everything seen. The legs flipping out like so. We'll go ahead and extend the feet. No harm in that that I'm aware of. So, that out of the way. Uh, we've got a big swing that we're going to have to do, because there's a lot on this toy that uh, rotates around. So, I'm going to bring all of this section down so we can begin to rotate the top half. All the way. Get this over here. Things are going to bang and clash, but don't worry. Don't worry. I got it all. Got it all handled. I just want to get these. I want to get to the legs. I want to get them out of here. Those will rotate around. And I will admit, this is a very sloppy way to transform this toy, but we're going with it for now. The shells are the annoying part. You have to get them out of the way. You have to get them out of the way. Just so you can work with everything else. Because there is so much on this thing that has to work itself around. So... All that has to fold up together, and we're going to we're going to have to do more with that later on. Uh, we'll see. That out of the way, I can get the torso up here. The arms have to open up all the way. There's a whole bunch of hinges here that I don't like. This is, you know, see, this is where I'm getting really sloppy with the transformation. Well, I started sloppy, I guess. But with this out of the way, torso goes down like that. And you can square it off like so. That gives you the arms. Fists slide out on those little minicon posts. I'm surprised I even remember minicon posts on these things sometimes. Because sometimes the engineering is a little bit involved and tend to lose little things like that. All right, so that's out of the way. A little bit of hmm, a little bit of plastic rubbing going on. Didn't notice that before. All right, so that's mostly. It's mostly our, uh, it's mostly what we need to get done for robot mode. Now is the time where it gets really annoying for me, because I can't remember how this is done. Hang on. This sequence has to be painful for some of you guys. I deeply apologize. All right, so this is why I don't like transforming this toy. All this accordioning to get that big electronic pack in where it's supposed to go. But once it is, we can lock it in place by clipping the head down. It should keep the arms about as steady as we're going to get them. You're going to hear it again. So with all that done, we can get this guy straightened out and actually present to you the finished robot mode of Energon Mirage. There's a very, very different look to him than a lot of stuff in the Energon line. He's very sleek. He's very thin, especially for a Voyager class. And really, he almost has... There's some, I want to say Gundam elements to him, especially in the legs. Now, the transformation, as you saw, annoys me. There's a lot of extra hinges. There's a lot of accordion motion. And it's just really frustrating to kind of get this guy in and out unless you've practiced. And I haven't practiced this toy in a little while, as in um, 10 years. But let's take a look at it now that we have it available to us in Robama. The head is just cool. 
Like, this is just an awesome head sculpt. That's not, There's nothing I can take away from that. Very tall, very, very sharp, very menacing. This thing is absolutely gorgeous. I think it's one of the favorite features for me and for a lot of people when it comes to Mirage. This, this just looks really freaking cool. I dig it. So, as I said, that light gray has come into play a lot more now that we have him in robot mode. It's the arms, it is the shoulders, it is much of the legs. And a lot of the purple has come in too. It's one thing about being a giant shell former. He basically just takes all of those colors and puts them behind him. And speaking of, that's the elephant in the room now, isn't it? Sheesh. I am a shelf displayer, which means this kind of thing infuriates me. So freaking annoying. Why? Why on earth do you have these massive things hanging off the side? Some say, well, it's like samurai's, uh, like the sheaths of a samurai sword or whatever. It's like, no, no, this was this is shell that they couldn't do anything with, and it's a nightmare. Stop defending this toy. It's uh, it's not good. I usually have to like flip it up vertically just to keep them in a shelf with everybody else. So yeah. We will ignore that, and we will focus on the robot itself. So, he's got a good look to him. Very broad chest, very sharp and sleek in details. He comes up hollow in the gut. That's a little bit disconcerting, but hey, maybe that makes him... I don't know what are... I don't know. I don't know why his gut's hollow, other than he just ran... All this. I don't know. I don't know. But, I know. I like the color schemes. There's a little bit... I like the color scheme well enough. I think there's a little bit too much going on. It's something Energon did a lot. I feel like I feel like we don't need this red, this maroonish color. I feel like a little bit more hit of yellow or even the, the, the bronze would have been fine. Um, I don't know. It just feels busy. He feels very, very busy. Though I wish... I, I know a lot of people wish we had that level of paint with toys these days. But yeah, like speaking of, you can see even little tiny details like that painted in. A lot of stuff going on on this guy. You'll notice that because of that giant backpack and the kibble, he is very, very back heavy. He has heel spurs to compensate for that. Hopefully, your joints are still nice and firm and they can actually compensate for that huge weight differential. If not, well, that's the one use for those gigantic pontoons on his back. You can actually tripod him. And that's a no-no for me. Big thing for me is you have to be able to stand if you're an action figure, but hey, I'm just the toy reviewer. What do I know? All right, so I'll go ahead and go with the articulation. His head has full rotation all the way around. That's always nice. Shoulders are universal. Swivel here and up and down here. Strangely enough, I've got I've got snappy hinge over here. I got snappy over here and nothing over here which means there's some kind of pin misfired, but it still works. So bicep rotates pretty well. You have full bend at the elbow, double elbow, great. Waist rotation works pretty well. Hips, so you've got some ratcheting effects in the hips, but they're the kind of hips that go way too far out. That's, uh, that's not a pleasant pose there, especially when you're carrying that much weight on your back. Thigh swivel works good. You have nice, nice ratcheted joints at the knees. Then you have all this little play here in the ankles, should you want it. And you're going to need it because, as mentioned, heavy. So, yeah. At the very least, he's posable, though. You got to make sure... So Whoa! You got to make sure some joints are tight. Like these, not so tight. Did I mention this guy is going to eBay soon? <laughs> I hope, who, yeah, whoever buys this, I hope you don't see this video. <laughs> this is not going to sell very well. Yeah, my big issue with him is, like, his backpack is absolutely massive and super heavy. And, yeah, huge amount of kibble. But, hey, he does have this. I am a fan of gimmicks that work in both modes, so there is that. And so at least he can launch more missiles should he need them. You will not be hearing it again. So, as long as you have that. You got a little bit of play value anyway, even if it does mean he's extremely back heavy in order to have it. This is where the big blocky Autobots who have these things don't really worry about this because they're big and blocky and heavy and they can compensate. But his hands hold 5mm weapons of which this toy line had a gimmick of. His forearms do have 
uh, your missile launchers, and you do have uh, you do have space for play if you so choose. So that that's Energon Mirage in a nutshell. I find him highly overrated. I remember so much hype for this guy back in the day, and admittedly, he looks extremely cool in both modes. I really, really dislike the transformation. He's kind of unpleasant for me because there's so much uh, double hinging going on just to get everything in place. And the robot mode is so hindered by that big gimmick backpack and the giant shells off of him. If you, if you, if you keep your toys in a shelf, good luck with this guy. I had to completely arrange a shelf all the way around him just to get him standing with the other Decepticons. He's kind of a mess. Uh, so yeah, the look of him is great. Play function, they really could have done better on this guy.